For this crochet project, I used my F or 4 millimeter crochet hook, as well as my J or 6 millimeter crochet hook. You're also going to need a pair of scissors and your tapestry needle. The colors that I used for this video tutorial are Pretty in Pink by Red Heart Super Saver. I love the way this yarn looks on the penguins, but I know that some people have difficulty with this yarn, so that's why I showed some alternative yarns, but I absolutely love this yarn if you're able to use it. And this color is Blue Ice. I also used the Bernat Pipsqueak Whitey White color on some of my penguins. You're also going to need some yarn. If you're making your own eyes, you're going to need the color that you want to make your eyes. You're going to need your black yarn and then whatever color your eyes are going to be. And also some white yarn. I'm using some of my effervesce, leftover effervesce white yarn. We're going to start making the head of the penguin. So I'm using my darker pink to show you, but if you want to make yours in the traditional color, you would just use the black yarn. The black yarn doesn't show up as well on video, which is why I'm using the pink yarn. But just take the pink yarn and drape it across your four fingers and use your thumb to stabilize and then wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers twice and then hold it in place with your pinky and thumb. Then I'm using my F crochet hook and you're just going to go under those two loops around the middle fingers and then you're going to just grab the yarn and bring up a loop. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for your slip knot. Now you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. So just take your crochet hook, go under those two loops, bring up a loop. You have two loops on the hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both for a single crochet. And we're going to make six of them into the magic circle. So that's two, So I just made six single crochet into the magic circle. I'm going to use my forefinger and thumb. Hold it at the base of those six single crochet. And you have these two loops on the opposite side. You're going to pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, just let go and pull on the other one. But this one's closing, so gently close it up. Then take the loose yarn in and pull on that. Don't worry about closing it all the way. We can close it more later. Then you're going to take and turn your work like this. And we're going to go into that first stitch in the circle. So you go into that first stitch under both loops. And we're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. So go into the same stitch. And you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. And we're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until we have a total of 12. And this is my last stitch. I'm going to make two single crochet into my last stitch, and then I'll have a total of 12. Now you can take and close the center of your magic circle if it's still open. Just take and turn your work over and pull on that loose yarn in on the back, and then that closes up the magic circle nicely. Now you're going to get a yarn marker. You can buy yarn markers but I like to just use my scraps of yarn. Just place it right where you left off. Now we're going to make increase rounds. So you're going to take your crochet hook, go into that first stitch, and make one single crochet. 
Then in the second stitch, you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So I'm going to do one more set with you. I'm going to do one single crochet in the first stitch and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then I'm going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then come back. So if you remember our last round we had 12 stitches. Now after this round you have 18. So that's what it means by doing an increase round. We're increasing our stitches around the circle. So I'm not going to give you the count each time now. I'm just making sure that you can follow along and see what we're doing. Now we're going to make our next increase round so you're just going to take your yarn marker and move it up to where we left off. And for this increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches. And then in the third stitch, you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. Then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now go ahead and move your yarn marker up and we're going to do one more increase round. You're going to make one single crochet into three stitches and then two single crochet into the fourth stitch and then come back. Now we're going to make our last increase round. Take your crochet hook, move it up to where you left off and you're going to make one single crochet into four stitches. and then two single crochet into the fifth stitch and then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So that is your last increase round if you're making the 8 inch sized penguin and I just want to show this is for the beginners mainly but I just want to show you for this round you should count your stitches and when you're counting your stitches I'm going to put the tapestry needle through one stitch so that's one stitch, two stitch, three, four. So you count them all the way around and you should have 36 stitches after that round. Then for each of the next 10 rounds you should have 36 stitches for each round because if you don't then it's either going to get smaller or bigger. So for the next 10 rounds go ahead and move your yarn marker up. The next 10 rounds you should only have one single crochet into every stitch. So I would recommend counting if you've never made one of these before just to make sure that you aren't increasing or decreasing your stitches and that for every round you have 36 stitches. So go ahead and make 10 rounds of just one single crochet into every stitch. For the larger penguin you're just going to keep making your increase rounds until you get to the size that you want and for mine this yarn marker represents where we stopped for the smaller penguin, the 8 inch penguin, and for the larger penguin I did 1 in 5, then 2 single crochet in the 6th stitch, 1 in 6, 1 in 7, and then 1 in 8. So my last round was 1 single crochet into 8 stitches and then 2 single crochet into the ninth stitch. My total number of stitches on that last round was 60 for the larger penguin. Then after you finish the increase rounds go ahead and move your yarn marker up and you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch. So for each round that you make now you're always going to have 60 stitches when you finish that round. So for the larger penguin you're going to need one single crochet into every stitch for 14 rounds. So you need 14 rounds of one single crochet into every stitch for the larger penguin. 
Now you just decide if you want to use your Red Heart Baby Clouds or Bernat Pips Greek or what type of yarn you want for the eyes. I'm going to show you what it looks like with the pink colored with the baby clouds. Now I'm going to show you what it's like using the Pipsqueak yarn because I actually like using this yarn for this project. So you're basically going to do it the same way that you made the head. The only difference is this yarn makes it difficult to see the stitches. So what you're going to do is just drape the yarn over your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, drape the yarn across your two middle fingers and then hold it in place, your pinky and thumb. And I use my larger hook because it helps make the stitches larger so that you can um, find them as you're crocheting. Then take your crochet hook, just go under those loops, bring up a loop, and don't make it too tight. Make your loop fit nicely around your crochet hook. It doesn't have to be tight. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for a slip knot. Then make sure your loop around your crochet hook isn't too tight. Then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. So I have two loops around my crochet hook right now. I'm going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both for a single crochet. And you can see how it would be difficult. It just looks like a furry blob. But you know that you have a single crochet that you just made. I have another loop on my crochet hook going through underneath to bring up a loop. Now I have two loops loosely on my crochet hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both for my second single crochet. And I'm going to make six single crochet into this magic circle. Then I'm going to take my forefinger and thumb and hold it at the base of those six single crochet. Then you have you still have those little furry loops opposite your six single crochet. It's just a little bit harder to see with this furry yarn. You're going to pull on one and then gently close. And again, same thing with this one. If it doesn't close, you let go and pull on the other one. But this one's closing. Just gently close it. You don't have to pull it real tight. Then take your loose yarn in and gently pull on that. Then you're going to turn it just like you did for the head to work into your first stitch. And as you can see, it just looks like a flur furry blob. But you know that there's a stitch there. Don't worry if you don't have the exact number of stitches. That doesn't matter. As long as it stays flat and looks furry for when you place it on your penguin. So take your crochet hook, go ahead and go into that first stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both for a single crochet. And you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. So I have two single crochet into that stitch. And then I'm going to go next to it into the next stitch where I know there's a stitch there and I'm going to make two stitches in that one, just like we did for the head. The only difference is you're kind of working blind. You know the stitch is there, so you're just feeling around for that stitch to work your two single crochet into that stitch. So this is my eighth stitch. This is the tenth. And then the last one, two single crochet into that last stitch. And you can see how you have a nice furry blob for your penguin eye. And it's about the same if you used the other type of yarn. I would say that this yarn is probably the easier one. 
but I just love the pipsqueak one for this project too. So if you're able to do it, this is a nice option for you. Then just take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, because this one we're going to make into the large penguin eye. So you need to make another round. I'm just going to put my yarn marker so you can kind of follow as I work to make the larger penguin eye. So that was for the 8 inch penguin eye. So I'm going to make two single crochet into every stitch around all the way to the yarn marker. And this is for my larger penguin. And you can kind of see how I'm working around. So as you can see, I'm trying to get two single crochet into every stitch. I'm not that concerned if I miss anything as long as it stays flat. That's all I want. I just want a furry circle. So I know that some people, they, they like to be exact, but for this one, it makes it a little bit trickier to try to do that. So I don't worry about that that much. And then you can see I'm back to my yarn marker. So I'm going to finish that finished up for that. And you can see how it makes a nice furry circle. That's what you want. So for my penguin, I'm actually going to go one more round because I want it a nice and big furry circle. So I'm actually going to make two single crochet into every stitch around for another round. And I'm just going to record so you can see what I'm doing. So you can see, I can't really see the stitches. Some people say they can feel them, but I'm just going right next to where I know the stitches and I just bring my crochet hook right through there. So I just know there's a stitch right next to it. So I'm just going in there and I'm making two. The reason you want to make two is because you want to increase the size. You don't want it to curl up into a ball. You want it to lay flat. So we're making increase stitches, so two single crochet into every prior row's stitch, and that just increases the number of stitches for the next round. It will curl up just a little bit, but don't worry, we're going to uh, sew it down flat, so that won't be a problem. So I'm putting two single crochet into every stitch. This is my last stitch. And that is the large penguin eye, back for the back and for the eye. Then you can just go ahead and slip stitch into the next stitch over, just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook then yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew it onto your penguin. So if you're making the large penguin, you're going to need two of these. And of course, if you're making the smaller one, you would use make the smaller one and make two of those. If you're making your eyes, then I'm going to show you how to do that. You're going to start with your F crochet hook. And for the center of the eye, you're going to use your black yarn. Since you know how to do the magic circle, now I'm just going to show you with the black yarn on video. Just take and make your magic circle, just like you did before. And then I'm using my F crochet hook. Go under those two loops, bring up a loop. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for a slip knot. Now you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle.
Then you're going to take your forefinger and thumb and hold it at the base. And you have your two loops on the other side that you're going to pull on one to close it up gently. Pull on the loose yarn end. Then you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around. So I'm going to go into the first stitch and make a single crochet. See if I can bring that in. So the black yarn's a little bit trickier. Doesn't want to show up as well. But you've done this before. So you're just going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12. my last stitch. So this is the center of the eye. Then if you still have a little opening in the center of the magic circle just turn it over and gently pull on that loose yarn end and that will close it up. Then you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop. So you have two loops on your hook. This is when you bring in your new yarn and I'm using this lighter blue for the color of the eyes. So whatever color you want your eyes to be, that's the yarn that you're going to bring. You're going to loop it and bring it through both loops on your hook. Then you're going to chain one with your new color. Chain one. Then you're going to take and cut the black yarn because we're not using that anymore. And then you're just going to tie a knot. Then you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch with your new color. So I'm going to bury my loose yarn ends as I work, but you don't have to. Go ahead and go into the next stitch over. Go behind your loose yarn ends if you're going to bury them. If not, then just bring up a loop. Two loops on your hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both for a single crochet. And then you're going to make two single crochet into the same stitch. And then by the time we're done, we'll have 24 stitches around the circle. So two single crochet into every stitch all the way around, and then come back. After you make two single crochet into every stitch around, this is how your work should look. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, go into that first stitch that you started with, and then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the eye onto your penguin. Then you're going to need some white yarn to make the little white shiny part of the eye. Now when you make your eyes and you place the white portion of the eye, make sure that you place it on the right side. So this is the left eye. So I put it on this side and then on the right eye I put it on the opposite side. So make sure you put your white dot on the right side before sewing it on. Just take your, your white yarn onto your tapestry needle and then you're going to go right into the corner of the eye just below the blue color between the blue color and the black portion or whatever colors you're using for your eye and make sure you leave enough on the back for tying a knot and then you're just going to go a, a row down 
with your tapestry needle. And you can see how it makes a little shiny white portion of the eye. Then you just take and tie a knot onto the back. And since this is going to be covered or sewn onto the penguin, you can go ahead and cut the loose yarn end. And then you're going to need two eyes. For the larger penguin, I'm going to show you how to make the part of the furry portion beneath the beak with the pipsqueak yarn. So you can see what it looks like when I crochet with the pipsqueak yarn. You're just going to fold it over into a loop, put your crochet hook into the loop, and I'm using my J crochet hook, 6 millimeter, because that helps make the stitches a little larger. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through that loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain of 20. There's one. And the thing about the pipsqueak yarn is you really can't see the stitch. So you're just working because you know the stitch is there. So you're just going to make the, <clears throat> sorry about that. So you're going to make the stitches the same way. It's just more difficult to see them. So that's so far a chain of six. I'm going to do one more with you. You're going to finish making a chain of 20. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the loop for a chain. Go ahead and finish making a chain of 20 and then come back. This is how your work should look after making your chain of 20. Then we're going to move up to the next row. So you're going to chain one. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So take your crochet hook, go into the second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both for a single crochet. And then with this yarn, it's difficult to see the stitch, but you know that there's a stitch there. So you're just going to take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both. So with this type of yarn you can guesstimate it's not if you miss a stitch it's not going to matter that much as long as you have a furry rectangular shape you're good so don't worry if you're not getting into the stitch or you're missing a stitch or anything like that I know that some people they feel and make sure that they're not missing any stitch you can do that as well but for me as long as I just guesstimate and I can make my single crochet and it comes out straight like this, that's all you need to do. So go ahead, finish making one single crochet into every stitch, back across, and then come back. This is how your work should look so far. You can see how it's making a rectangular shape. After you make your single crochet into the last stitch, you're going to chain one. Turn your work. And then you're going to make a single crochet into the same stitch. So go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both. And then you're just going to go make a single crochet into every stitch back across. I'm just going to show you how I make mine. So I can't see the stitches but I know there's a stitch there so I just go right in there. So this yarn looks like it's hard to use but depending on your project as you can see for this project it isn't that hard to work with to get the look that you want and it's just really soft which is why I like to use it. 
Go ahead, finish making one single crochet into every stitch back across, and then make two single crochet into the last stitch, and then come back. This is how your work should look. And then if you're making the, the bottom portion that goes under the beak, you would finish off here, so you just yarn over, and then just pull enough yarn through to sew it onto your project. This is how I sewed on the eyes for the large penguin. I put it right towards the inner eye, uh, inner side of the backing, the furry backing. Make sure that when you position it that you have the white portion positioned correctly. And that's how mine looks. And this is what it looks like on the larger penguin after I sewed the eyes on. For the beak, I used the gold color. And for the smaller beak, you're going to loop your yarn over on each other. And then take your F or 4 millimeter crochet hook. Just go right through the loop. Hold the base with your middle finger and thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain of 8. So here's the smaller beak. For the larger beak, it's made the same way, except that you're starting with a chain of 10. Then you're going to take your crochet hook and go into the second chain from the hook. Bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. And then you're going to make a single crochet into every stitch back across. This is how my work looks. Then just turn your work and then single crochet into the next stitch over. And then just make one single crochet into every stitch back across. Then when you reach the end, you just turn your work, go into the next stitch over, and then make a single crochet all the way back across. Keep doing that all the way until you get to the point and then come back and I'll show you what to do next. So I just finished one single crochet into two stitches. Now I'm going to turn my work for my last stitch and for the last point stitch I'm just going to go into the next stitch over and then I'm going to do a slip stitch. So I'm going to yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch and then finish off just enough to bury into your work. And you need two of these. Then you're going to get your two pieces that you just made and put them together. And we're going to crochet them together. Take your crochet hook, put it right into the end stitch on both triangles. Then take your yarn Go ahead and hook your yarn and bring it through. Make a chain one. Turn the work over and then just tie a knot. Then you're just going to make a single crochet evenly spaced all the way to the top and then come back. I'm going to do a few with you. I'm also going to bury some of my loose yarn ends. So you just take, go into the next stitch over, go behind your loose yarn ends, bring up a loop, make a single crochet, and then you're going to single crochet all the way to the top. I'm just going to do a few with you so you can see how I do it. And then at this point I can tuck the loose yarn ends into the inside and then continue 
making a single crochet to the point at the top of the beak. I'm also going to tuck those loose yarn ends at the point into the center of the work as I crochet. Then I'm going to grab the point, both points, make a single crochet at the point. Then I'm going to start going down the other side. Just making one single crochet into every stitch. Now at this point I'm going to put one more into this stitch so it doesn't curl up. So two single crochet in the same stitch and then I'm going to go down the other side. So go ahead Finish making a single crochet into every stitch down the other side and then come back. Then when you reach the end you're just going to yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the beak onto the penguin. Then take any other loose yarn ends and just tuck them right into the beak. So then you have your smaller beak and you have your larger beak for your penguins. This is what my beak looks like after sewing on the larger beak. And then this is the smaller beak. This is what the white and the pink look like together. If you're making the baby hat, then you're going to put the, mark, the yarn markers where the ear flaps are going to go. So I put mine right at the end of the white portion of the face beneath the beak and counted this yarn marker stitch counts as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then I put my other yarn marker in place for one ear flap and then did the same thing on the other side. So put the one in and then count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 for your second ear flap. After you have your ear flaps in place, then you're going to go to the back of your hat. You can go ahead and finish off. So you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch over, yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then we're going to make the ear flaps. If you want to put the furry edge along the bottom before putting the ear flaps, what you're going to do is just join with your J hook into the back where you just finished off. Just grab your yarn then you're going to chain one and tie a knot. We're going to bury the loose yarn ends as we work. You're just going to make one single crochet into every stitch around. Sorry about the noises during this video. <laughs> I have the tree trimmers and then also my phone. But you're going to just make one single crochet into every stitch all the way around. And you're going to leave your yarn markers in so you know where you're going to put your ear flaps. Just work around the yarn marker. And you're just making one single crochet into every stitch all the way around and then come back. When you get back to your beginning stitch, you're just going to make a slip stitch into that first stitch that you made. Just yarn over and turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. 
Then you're going to finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then we're going to make the earmuffs. So you're just going to fold down. This is what it looks like with our yarn markers in place and the trim that we put. If you don't have the trim, you just go right into the stitch that you had your yarn marker. If you have the trim, then you're going to fold it down. You're going to take your crochet hook and just go right through. So you can see that from my trim, I used the J or six millimeter crochet hook. And for the ear, my ear protectors, I'm using my F or four millimeter crochet hook. I'm going to grab the same colored yarn as the hat. I'm going to hook it and bring it through. Then you can take your yarn marker and remove it. We don't need it anymore. Then you're going to chain one and tie a knot. And we're going to bury the loose yarn end as we work. So you're going to go into the next stitch behind the loose yarn end bring up a loop and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch across to your yarn marker. And once you've buried your loose yarn end enough, you can go ahead and cut it. And then you're just going to keep making one single crochet into every stitch up to the yarn marker. So I'm at my yarn marker now. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my yarn marker. This is what my work looks like so far. I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to turn my work. And then I'm going to make one single, one single crochet into every stitch back across. I'm not going to go into the same stitch where I made a chain one. I'm going to go into the next stitch over. So go ahead, finish making one single crochet into every stitch back across to where you started at your first yarn marker and then come back. When you reach the end I'm going to do one last stitch in my last stitch on that row then I'm going to chain one and turn and then go ahead and finish three more rows of one single crochet into every stitch across and then come back. After you finish your third row of one single crochet into every stitch, then after your last single crochet in the last stitch, you're just going to turn your work. And then you're going to go into the next stitch over and make a single crochet. And then you're just going to make a single crochet into every stitch back across. Then you're just going to turn your work again. You're going to go into the next stitch over and it's going to create a little curve because you're not chaining one. And then you're going to take, after you finish on this row, I had one, two, three, four, five stitches. 
Then I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch. So I'm just going to go into the next stitch. I'm going to yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then I'm going to finish off, yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then you're going to do the exact same thing on the other side of the hat for the other ear flap. After you finish your other ear flap, then you're going to take your loose yarn ends and put them right onto your tapestry needle. And then just weave it onto the inside of the ear flap. And then just take any loose yarn ends that you have on your hat and just bury them. And that is your baby hat, the penguin baby hat.